when Don Wilson, the Associate General Secretary of the General Assembly, uh, feared that he might not be allowed back into the country at the end of his furlough in the summer of 1966, he introduced me to Dr. Pond. 當時候有一個位置去牧師 we developed a close friendship with Dr. Pump. <laughs> once a week, at least once a week, it was, uh, we arranged to meet Dr. Pump uh, for four years. Dr. Pump managed to elude his keepers and meet with us at least once a week for four years. I began to learn from him and others to whom he introduced me that the nationalist government was indeed as corrupt and brutal as it had been on the mainland 20 years before. Our first project with Dr. Pung was to provide credible information to foreign visitors who wanted to know more about the real situation in Taiwan. This credible information consisted of articles from scholarly journals around the world and some articles that friends wrote here in Taiwan. Judith and I did not believe it appropriate for us to try to convince Taiwanese about the reality of their own situation. But we felt it our civic duty to inform other U.S. citizens about what we saw happening in Taiwan. So with a small network of other trusted foreigners, we provided this information to visitors for four years. Just we were mindful that even possessing as well as distributing such materials was a capital offense under white terror. We I have a friend. Her name is Ora Custer. She is 95 years old and she's almost blind. 
他今年九十五岁，他差不多啊、呃、失明，他看不见。Whenever I'm in town, once a week I go and read to Oral. 我一，假如我在家的时候，我一个礼拜到他那边去读书给他听。She insisted that I read to her the manuscript of Fireproof Moth. 她要我啊读那个啊我的那一本书的草稿，就是扑火飞蛾那本书的草稿给她听。The question she asked me several times was this: When you knew what kind of a place you were in. Why did you endanger your children and your wife, and not just leave and come back home? He asked me many times. He said, "When you knew the situation was so bad, so dangerous, why did you leave your wife and your children to be in that dangerous situation? Why did you not go back home and leave them to die?" In some ways, the book itself is an answer to that question, but the short answer is this: For me, when you have made close friends whose lives you learn are in imminent danger, it is easier to do what you can to help them than it is to walk away. 我那本书多多少少回答这个问题，可是。比较简单的回答就是这样：当你交交了许多好朋友，你知道他们的生命有危险。对我来说，我尽我可能的要帮忙他们，比一走了之来的容易。Along with Dr. Pun, there were two other close friends and colleagues, Wei Jing Chao and Xie Zongming. 跟啊，除了。啊，彭教授以外，我还有两个很好的朋友，他们是魏廷朝跟谢长明。We didn't meet them right away because they were both still in prison、uh, when we met Dr. Pang in 1966. 一九六六年我们跟彭教授认识的时候，他们两个人还在监狱里面，所以我们没有马马上碰到他们。These two former graduate students of Dr. Pang at the National University had been arrested with him. In 1964, in an attempt to distribute the manifesto for self-salvation of Formosa. These two gentlemen are the former professors of the University of Taipei. They were arrested in 1964 and were arrested in the attempt to distribute the manifesto for self-salvation of Formosa. These two gentlemen are the former professors of the University. This document called into question the very legitimacy of the John government. 这个在台湾自救宣言就是质疑蒋介石政权的合法性。Looking back, many say now that this point was the beginning of Taiwan's struggle for the democratization of the island. 现在回头去看，许多人说这个文件，这个台湾自救宣言就是。台湾人争取民族奋斗的开始。Although we couldn't meet Xie or Wei in person for two years, they were a part of our lives. 虽然我们啊还没有两年当中还没有遇到啊这两位先生，可是他们他我很在我们的跟彭教授在一起的时候，我差不多认识他们。Thanks to their courage and creativity, they were able to send out from prison lists on very thin fragments of paper with the names of political prisoners, their situation, and sometimes information about the conditions in their families. We are very grateful for their courage and creativity. They were able to send out from prison lists on very thin fragments of paper with the names of political prisoners, their situation, we were able to provide these lists to Amnesty International, assuming that 
even a little bit of publicity about the prisoners helped with some protection. These notes from Wei and She let us know the desperate situation that most families of political prisoners faced at the time. Wei was released from prison first on September the 20th, 1968. He hadn't been out of prison a week when Dr. Peng brought him to our house at Taiwan Seminary. The stories about Wei's refusal to be intimidated by the court or his guards are all well known. During his trial, he stood up and dared the judge to sentence him to death. I wasn't sure what to expect when I saw him arrive at the door of the house. Would he be hardened? Would he be cynical from the experience that he had? Wei greeted Judith and me, and then he saw our two and a half year old daughter over there in the living room hiding behind the chair. Before we knew it, Wei was sitting on the floor talking with Elizabeth in Mandarin and also Taiwanese, and I suspect maybe a little bit of his native Hakka too. <laughs> <laughs> Within weeks, Wei was tutoring me and perhaps preparing my history lectures at the seminary. Although Wei was not a Christian, I think he would be proud of the respect that this body has shown to his people this week. With Dr. Pung, Mr. Wei, we continued our plans for aiding the families of political prisoners. Uh, Xie Zongming was released from prison exactly a year later in 1969. Like Wei, he came to the house within a week of his release. Wei had already talked with him about the plan to aid families of political prisoners. Uh, he said that he was ready to begin this distribution immediately. I couldn't believe it. Here he was, just out of prison, and yet ready to assume another dangerous and a capital offense again. 
uh, pass to aid the families of political prisoners, I simply couldn't believe it. Not only was he, he and Wei going to be involved in distributing this money to families where they could find them all over the island, but the money first had to be smuggled into the country. That was my job, uh, to get money in that the American Friends Service Committee in Philadelphia had agreed to raise secretly for this purpose. The distribution began within the next week. In order to avoid using their real names, talking about them at home or anywhere else, we gave them English names. Uh, as we had to Dr. Pung, and as Dr. Pung is still known to me as Peter. <laughs> Mr. Wei became Matthew. Wei is Matthew, Mr. Chef became Tony. Uh, Tony. Working with them was consistent with what Judith and I had decided two years earlier when we determined that we would work with Dr. Pung to do whatever we needed to do. Because Judith and I were both foreigners, we assumed that we could do things for which we might be deported, but which the same things done by Taiwanese would likely result in imprisonment, torture, and maybe even death. 我跟我的前妻，我们是这么想，我们是外国人，所以我们做事情就是被国民党逮到了，最多是被驱逐出境。可是台湾人做跟我们同样的事情，那就不一样了，他们可能会被抓、被关、被刑求，甚至被处死。
。我们觉得第一件事情要做的是要告诉杜教授，他必须离开。第二四件事情是，台湾市面是好，你要怎么把一个人啊、呃、让他逃出去 ？But on January the third, nineteen seventy, he left Suncheon Airport on a JAL flight to Hong Kong. He was dressed. As a hippie with a beard, with a burned arm. 在一九七零年一月三一月三号，他从松山机场打扮成一个嬉皮的那个歌手，啊啊，有有胡子，啊，从松山机场坐日航班机飞到香港。In February of 1972, President Nixon and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger. Met with President Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai. In 1972, Nixon, American President Nixon, and Xi Jinping, and Zhou Enlai, met in China. The recently declassified transcript of those conversations revealed that they really wanted to know how Dr. Peng got out of the country, but they didn't. Ah, recently, it's been secreted. 的的那个国务院的文件说，他们有三人三个人啊会谈的那个记录，他们三个人在一起，他们真的想知道彭教授到底是怎么离开台湾的。They did not know that Judith and I, with Dr. Peng, two other missionary couples, a missionary in Hong Kong, an American Quaker friend in Japan, and two Japanese. Arranged for his escape to Sweden. They were quite not aware of the fact that I and my former wife, Peng Jiaoshu, and two Chinese ministers, and one Japanese friend in Hong Kong, and one Japanese friend in Japan, and two Japanese friends in Japan, and two Japanese friends in Japan, and two Japanese friends in Japan. None of us had ever had any experience with escapes. But sometimes determination and luck can trump naivete and even John Kaiseck's Stalinist form of security system. But sometimes determination and luck can trump naivete and even John Kaiseck's Stalinist form of security system. But sometimes determination and luck can trump Joe and I, Richard Nixon, John Kaiser, all went to their graves without knowing how Pong escaped from the island. Nixon, ah, Joe and I, and Jiang Jiechi, they three men, to the end of the day, did not know. Our involvement was not revealed until the mid '90s, when I think you and Judah did it in Southern California, right? And how we did it was not revealed until 2003. 我们啊参与这件事情是到一九九零年代，那个时候彭教授跟啊 Judith 唐啊唐牧师的前妻。在南加州公布的，然后他们到底怎么执行的，一直到二零零三年才对外公布。Neither Mr. Wei nor Mr. Xie knew of the escape. We decided that though we knew they would be prime suspects, we couldn't add to their vulnerability by actually involving them in the escape. 魏先生跟谢先生他们完全不知道逃亡这件事，因为我们知道国民党一定会啊、呃、说他们是是他们搞的事，所以我们不想把他们卷入他们已经够麻烦的这种身份。It was not a matter that we didn't trust them. It was an acknowledgement that we were such rank amateurs. At such things that we didn't want to put them to any more risk than they already were. This is not that we don't trust them. It's because we are we are all hands on deck. This kind of thing is not no hope. It's not no experience. So we put them in this situation to increase their risk. 
One year later, on February the 23rd, 1971, a week before Judith and I were arrested, Wei and Cher were taken into custody. We had been right about what would happen to Taiwanese associated with us. It was over 13 months before they were brought to trial in a secret court. They were tried secretly and sentenced to 15 years in prison, later commuted by half. Both were tortured horribly. We know the details of the interrogation and torture because She was able to smuggle out a letter that got to me in the United States. And on April the 24th, 1972, I was able to get the letter published as an op-ed in the New York Times. After their release from prison the second time, Xie went into exile and lived in Southern California for a while. Wei was rearrested in connection with the Kaohsiung incident and sentenced to another eight years in prison. With the end of martial law in 1987, Xie and Wei continued to provide service to the people of Taiwan. She has worked tirelessly to document the casualties of white terror and as an advocate for reparations to former political prisoners. She is only and Wei did likewise. In 1997, he published the Taiwan Human Rights Report from 1946 to 1996. Wei in 1997, he after spending most of his adult life as a political prisoner, on December the 28th, 1999, on his morning jog, Wei's great heart stopped beating. In December of 1979, General Secretary Gao Junming was asked to help some Taiwanese pastors hide a human rights advocate that was being hunted by the police. I'm told that Gao did not hesitate. Since he was under watch 24 hours a day himself, 
He couldn't bring the activist into his own home, so he arranged another place for him to stay. Gao and the pastors were, of course, later arrested. Gao's arrest was such an embarrassment to the nationalist government that he was released in August of 1984. And so highly was he regarded by Presbyterians in Taiwan that despite his being in prison, you continued to elect him General Secretary. While he was in prison, Secretary Gao's wife, Ruth, visited the United States raising awareness about human rights issues here in Taiwan. Presbyterian friends in the old PCUS mission office in Atlanta arranged a private meeting for me with her. I was amazed at her confidence and her courage. She told me something that I'm going to check with you right now. Uh, she told me that the real reason that, uh, that the government was so embarrassed by uh, Secretary Gao was that he kept converting his guards. Is that the real reason that he was allowed out of prison early? In, in our meeting together, Ruth gave me a copy of a poem that he wrote in prison on June the 27th, 1982. I'm sure that probably everybody in this room knows that poem. I asked the Lord for fresh flowers. But instead, God gave me an ugly cactus with thorns. I asked the Lord for a butterfly, but instead, God gave me many ugly and dreadful worms. I was threatened, and I was disappointed. I mourned, but after many days, suddenly, I saw the cactus bloom with beautiful flowers. Those worms became beautiful butterflies flying in the spring wind. God's way is the best way. Secretary Gal and Ruth both knew what it meant to be good Samaritans on the Jericho Road. Um, 
耶利哥路上做好的撒玛利亚人的真正的意义。潘明明，薛宗明，韦廷桥 ，although not ostensibly religious。Secretary Gao, Ruth, and many others that I have not named demonstrated to me with their lives the justice and mercy that I associated with the highest Christian values. Peng Jiao Shou, Xie Chongming Xianxuan, Wei Tingtao Xianxuan, Fang Meng Shi Mu Shi Liang, and some of them, I cannot mention their names here, but for the people of Taiwan, the people of Taiwan, the people of Taiwan, 他们用他们的生命，实践了慈爱与公义。They were living examples of the core Christian teaching of Jesus' story in the Good Samaritan. 他们是耶稣在好的撒玛利亚人这个比喻当中所要教训的活生生的范例。Judith and I were often told, usually by other missionaries, "You are guests in the country," as the reason for not getting involved in the political affairs of a country not our own. You, we in Taiwan, the time, my husband and I often hear this advice. The majority of our friends are missionaries. They tell us. 你不要忘记，我们只有在这个这这个国家是做客人。The principle has some merit in international relations, but it is a principle that serves the status quo. 意思是告诉我们，你不要去管人家的事情。这个原则在啊国际政治上也许有它有它存在的理由，可是这个原则本身是在支持。Uh, as desirable as that may be in the world of international relations, the principle may also be an immoral justification. In Taiwan, a brutal and corrupt government was unable to stay in power, due in no small measure to my own government in the United States. I don't know. In Taiwan, this corrupt government and bad government can be unstoppable, because my country, the United States, their support is unconditional. I love my country. And I love the work the church sent me to Taiwan to do. But my conscience didn't allow the luxury of being politically uninvolved. By doing nothing. I believed I would be putting my stamp of approval on what the U.S. government was doing here, and as an act of faith, I chose otherwise. I don't know if Dr. Pung Mr. Wei or Mr. She ever thought much about the story of the Good Samaritan, but certainly the Gaos would have known it well. I don't know if Peng Jiao Shou, Xie Chongyi 先生跟魏清桥先生知不知道好的撒玛利亚人这个比喻，可是我知道高牧师穆斯良一定很熟悉。But they all would have understood the tragedy of the priest and the Levite passing the wounded man. On the other side of the road. They had all doubtless lamented those Christians and non Christians alike who had been content to ignore the plight of their neighbors 
suffering under the brutality of the Zhang government. But they would also have understood the story from a couple of months ago from Logan, Utah, when there was an accident between a car and a motorcycle, and both burst into flame. People began to run from the scene as the fear of an explosion increased. A couple of policemen nearby began to push people back. Uh, Suddenly there was a young woman and she looked over underneath the car and she saw the man under the car move and she said, he's alive. Suddenly, a couple of policemen, women from the group, and men rushed to the burning fire. And burning their hands, they picked up the car. They lifted up the edge and they pulled out the man and they saved his life. 忽然间，几个几个警察跟旁观者，还有一些女人，他们他们到那个汽车，那个汽车很热，他们不怕热，把那个汽车抬起来，把那个活的人拉出来，救了他们命。The people present just didn't watch a tragedy unfold. 他们在那边没有袖手旁观。They did something about. 他们冒险救人。The people I met. On the road in Taiwan, and many others like them whose names I don't know, have spent their lives trying to help others at great personal risk. The Book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 1, reminds us that in the company of these heroes, we are surrounded by literally a great cloud of witnesses. And if you read carefully the list of those in Hebrews chapter 11, and you look at those in Taiwan who have sacrificed so much for the democratization of this country, you see how few there are that are actually Christian. According to Jesus, it is not those who say, Lord, Lord, but those who do the will of God. The road ahead in Taiwan is not easy. People, people had high hopes for the elections, and many worked so hard to bring about change.
but the established interest, money, and of course the China threat factor played a role in the vote for the continuation of the present government. Taiwan is still being plagued by robbers who want to deprive the people of their freedom and democracy. More good Samaritans are needed to stand up for what is right and to help bring about a caring, free, and open society that can steer Taiwan in the right direction. I believe it is not the role of the United States and other nations to decide the future of Taiwan, but I believe it is their role to insist that the future be decided by the people of Taiwan, not in Beijing, in Washington, Ottawa, or anywhere else. I pledge to you my determination, as long as I have breath, to work with others who care about Taiwan and with them resist any efforts by our governments to compromise your freedom and determine your future. To you and me, as to those who still heard the story of the Samaritans on the road to Jericho, Jesus says, Go and do likewise. So we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who have done just that. So let us lay aside every weight that distracts us and run the race that is set before us. So that one day, one day, all the people of Taiwan will, in the words of that old African American spiritual, be able to shout, Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty, we're free at last!